it's obvious that the aid workers were uh, purposely killed by the IDF. One, uh, they, the, uh, the aid group told the IDF where they were. The IDF knew the symbols on their vehicles. Uh, the aid group has worked with uh, the Israeli government for several months before before this. Uh, so the Israeli government and the IDF knew what the symbol was. They knew their location, and yet they still attacked them. They were just leaving a uh, food distribution site uh, to bring aid to Palestinians in the north, and they were murdered for helping Palestinians. That's the reason. And to scare uh, World Central Kitchen from sending other aid workers into Gaza, as well as scare, scare other aid workers from wanting to help people in Gaza. Seven team members between the special specialty security people we have, three British individuals and three uh, three international crew plus one Palestinian, that they were targeted systematically, car by car. They attacked the first car. We're still trying to uh, get all the information on what happened on the first car. Um, we, we have a feeling they were able to escape safely because it was an armored vehicle. They were able to move in the second one. Um, again, this one was hit. They were able to move in the third one. In the process, we know they were trying to call, uh, but in the chaos of the moment, um, whatever happened, they uh, to try to be telling IDF that, that what are they doing, that they were targeting us in a deconflicting zone, in an area controlled by IDF. Them knowing that was our teams moving on that route with two armor, with three cars. And then they... Yeah, the IDF knew who these people were. Um, there is... There's no lie about that. Um, funny enough, uh, people are trying to claim that the lead workers had guns on them, so it justifies the IDF in murdering these people. That's, that's just outrageous. They hit the third one, and then we saw the consequences of that continuous targeting attack. Seven, seven people dead, um, but there are seven on top of a list of more than another 190 humanitarian workers that they've been killed over the last six months. We understand how Chef Andres is feeling, right? We just lost uh, members of his team, I'm sure, who felt like family to him as well. Uh, the op-ed was very powerful. What he does is heroic, not just in Gaza, around the world, providing food, providing that essential humanitarian assistance. And we... Yeah, these people provide aid to whoever it is that is in need, uh, not just Israel, not just people in Palestine, but yeah, around the world. These, uh, this aid group helped uh, Israel after October 7th, helping the people that were injured and stuff, and yet the reward for helping the Israeli government is to be murdered. He, um, you know, you, you heard from the president last night in his statement. He, it is, uh, he's outraged and he's heartbroken. We are all heartbroken here by those. But what has the United States done to, uh, to uh, punish the Israeli government for their murder of aid workers? Have they uh, put sanctions on the aid workers? Has Biden told uh, Israel that they won't be funding or arming the Israeli government anymore? No, because that is continuing to happen. Uh, the U.S. officials are just giving crocodile tears. Seven lives lost. And so we are going to continue to mourn uh, with them, with um, with, the, with Chef Jose Andres and obviously the families. Uh, I'm just not going to, he's going to speak for himself. Uh, we are very clear about where we stand. I think the president's uh, statement was incredibly powerful, impactful. Uh, and really truly lays out where how he feels about the current situation. The dreadful events of the last two days are a moment when we should mourn the loss of these brave humanitarian workers, including the three British citizens that tragically uh, were killed. We should also send our condolences uh, to their families and our thoughts should be with them. Uh,
will you be seeking the justice uh, for these British citizens murdered by the Israeli government? Uh, or UK just going to let the Israeli government do whatever do whatever it wants to any citizen. I welcome what the Israeli foreign minister said yesterday to me about a full, urgent and transparent inquiry into how this dreadful event was allowed to happen. And we want to see that happen very, very quickly. I also welcome... How was it allowed to happen? I mean, this isn't the first time the Israeli government has killed aid workers. Uh, about 200 aid workers have been killed so far. Israeli government. Welcome the fact that he spoke about much more aid getting into Gaza, up to 500 trucks a day. That is essential. We've been promised these things before, and this really needs to happen, including longer opening times at the vital crossing points. But of course, the extra aid won't work unless there is proper deconfliction, unless aid can be taken around Gaza, and we avoid the dreadful incidents like we see, we've seen in the last couple of days. That is vital, and Britain will be watching very closely to make sure that that happens. Yeah, it's an awful, awful tragedy to think that these were brave Brits who were actually risking their lives to bring aid to people in need in Gaza to have lost their lives in these circumstances is tragedy. My thoughts, obviously, with their family and their friends at this time. You know, I spoke... Honestly, more people should be uh, angry about the Israeli government killing citizens of their nation instead of just being so nonchalant oh this was a tragedy oh it was a mistake oh this won't happen ever again like no this happened continuously by the israeli government they don't care if they're killing uh, citizens of their allies all they want to do is kill people I spoke to prime minister netanyahu last night and was very clear with him that the situation is increasingly intolerable and what we urgently need to see is a thorough, transparent investigation into what has happened, uh, but also a dramatic increase in the amount of aid getting into Gaza, removing the barriers, uh, but also closer work with aid agencies to make sure things like this don't happen again. He was completely selfless. What needs to happen is uh, the UN needs to send in uh, peacekeeping troops to protect aid workers, to protect doctors, to protect civilians from being murdered by the Israeli government. Um, which explains why he went to Gaza. Um, his experiences in, in the British Army um, when, when he served in Bosnia and Afghanistan, he, he knew the dangers, he was no fool, and people were telling him this could be very dangerous for you. But he knew the dangers. He, he was selfless in that regard and, and he, he just wanted to help people. I don't really know how, or how dangerous it was over there, but even if I did know, you tell him, well, don't go, don't go. He's the type of character that's just gonna, he needed to do that. I'm a little bit angry in, in the response from the Israeli Prime Minister uh, in what he said. Um, this, this isn't what happens in war. Um, humanitarian people that are out there trying to do good to people don't get killed in this way. Um. Yeah, uh, aid workers are non-combatants that are protected under international law to be able to give aid to people. Uh, but as we know, the Israeli government doesn't care about international law whatsoever, which is why they will murder aid workers, UN members, diplomats, doctors, kids. That's why they go into the West Bank and kill people and take land, because they don't care about international law. They only care about what the Israeli government and the right-wingers want, and that's the genocide of every single Palestinian and anybody that tries to help them. Um, they, are, they are heroes, all seven of them. The British government have been good, and um, the family would also like to say that give thanks to all the other nations that have offered their condolences. All valued team members to, to whom we were very close, Solis is very much a family, um, all former uh, serving soldiers with long uh, experience in the risk management industry, all highly trained, highly professional and a truly...